Morning, everyone. We have a lot of material to cover today, so uh, I want to thank the A4M for inviting me to be here to lecture to you all. Now, what I want to talk about is basically stem cells and platelet-rich plasma injections. There's no reason why any of you cannot do these in your office. These are simple procedures to do, but there's a lot of little tricks that you have to follow to do these. And here's what I call the holy trinity. Basically, we have to use adult stem cells. And notice I said adult. Growth factors and scaffolds, okay? This is what makes things work. Now, we're looking at a revolution in biologics. This is not going away. This is here to stay, and it's going to become more and more prevalent in medicine. Now, I basically have been here all my life, but I basically want to get my patients better without taking them to the OR because that's a barbaric way of treating a lot of these injuries. Now, here, I'm going to use an old adage sort of to twist it around a bit. In this case, the scalpel is not as mighty as the syringe, okay? And that's what we're going to find here. Now, let's talk about platelet-rich plasma. This is a very important topic because if you don't know this, you should not be doing stem cells because this is so important. Now, at one time, we used to think that platelet-rich plasma, basically all the platelets did was they clotted the, the, the blood, basically, when you got a cut. Well, that's true, but far from the important thing. What we really need to know is that the platelets have all the growth factors. They have the fertilizer for the stem cells. That's what's so important. Now here we see a normal blood smear, and we see some platelets in here. Now we see a platelet-rich plasma blood smear. Notice how we have a high concentration of platelets. This is so important. This is the basic step in doing regenerative medicine. This is how basically everything gets better. The platelets are the, the precursors to getting things better. Now, what's in a PRP? Okay, well, obviously we have platelets. Neutrophils, very important, and we'll get into why that's important. We have monocytes. We have fibroblasts. We have endothelial cells. Now, I want you to think of stem cells like an army on the march. And like any army, you have to have a supply line. If your army loses its supply line, what happens? It's going to fail. Well, stem cells need a supply line, need a blood supply. And that's what these endothelial cells will do. You have some keratinocytes. And guess what? In a PRP, a good PRP, we're also going to have some stem cells in there. We have one thing called a very small embryonic-like stem cell. So very important that we uh, have a good PRP there. Now, here's a diagram that shows the various growth factors. Now, believe me, this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of other growth factors involved. These are just some of the main ones, but let me call your attention to a few of them. We have here vascular endothelial growth factor. What does that do? It gets that supply line for the stem cells. It makes a blood supply to that area. Another important one, IGF, insulin growth factor. We all know HDH. Well, this is the active form of HDH. This is what concerns some of the people in athletics because we're now starting to fool with HGH and, and insulin growth factor one. At one time, a couple of years ago, we were not allowed to use PRP in any Olympic athlete. And then finally, the Spanish Olympic Committee convinced WADA, the World Anti-Doping Agency, that we should be allowed to use it. But you can't use this stuff intravenously because then it would be considered performance enhancement. So there's still a lot of, you know, little controversy out there. Now, what are these growth factors? These growth factors are really what we call cytokines, coming from the Greek. Now, cytokines means cell-singling protein molecules. The best way I can describe these cytokines is almost like the, the iPhone or the Android system of the body. It has one cell communicating with another and tells the cell what to do. Now, these cytokines can be proteins, they can be peptides, or they can be glycoproteins. And they basically encompass many different cells. Obviously, they're found in platelets. They're also found, believe me, in stem cells and things like that. Now, basically, the growth factors in cytokines and stem cells work with three different mechanisms. They can work with an endocrine type system, much like our own endocrine system, where one group of cells can affect a very distant group of cells. They can be an autocrine system, where they can basically affect their, their own cells. But more often than not, what we're seeing is it's a paracrine system, where they can basically affect a neighboring group of cells. And that's how most of the stem cells typically work, and that's how they get their work done. Now, the bottom line for these growth factors is they activate stem cells to grow in number and help initiate repair of various types of tissue. Now, here's a diagram of how things work here. 
Here we see some activated platelets. Now they look like